Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use arrays to simplify your coding and make it more efficient. In coding, we do repetitive things all the time. For example, I routinely need to standardize my text variables to make them easier to compare by making them uppercase, removing punctuation, and getting rid of leading and trailing spaces. But you may also need to modify numeric variables by converting, for example, Fahrenheit to Celsius or create a new series of variables to hold values from calculations. For these kinds of repetitive tasks, arrays really shine. Be sure to watch to the end where I show you some shortcuts that will make your coding easier. We're going to start simple, then get progressively more complex. We're going to start by standardizing text values. We're going to be working from the cars data set that I modified a bit. You can see that some of the text values are uppercase, some are lowercase, and some are mixed. You can see there are leading spaces, and although you can't see them, there are trailing spaces for some as well. You can also see the word front is truncated to fron for some of the records. If we wanted to isolate Acuras, for example, without standardizing, we would need to account for all different cases and leading and trailing spaces. So let's clean up these text variables to make them easier to use. And rather than stripping the leading and trailing blanks and setting the text to upcase, for each variable, let's use an array to perform the same tasks on all variables. The syntax for creating an array starts with the word array. Then you give the array a name. Because we're working on character variables, let's call our array strings. Then we add the variable names we want to include in our array. For this example, we're including all five of the character variables in our data set. It's important to note that an array can only include the same data type, so you may need one array for your character variables and another for your numeric variables. In order to iterate through our array of variables, we need to use a do loop. The simplest for this purpose is the do over loop, which will add one variable at a time to the code inside the do loop before the end statement. Inside our do loop, we use the strip function to remove leading and trailing spaces. Then we use the upcase function to set our strings to uppercase. So you can imagine this process as follows. First, make replaces strings in the code so it's stripped of leading and trailing blanks and set to uppercase. Then the same happens to model, then type, and so on, until all variables in our array have been processed. It processes each of the variables in the array for one row, then moves to the next row until all rows have been processed. So let's run this code. So we can see that all of our text values have been set to uppercase, and all the leading and trailing spaces have been removed. But it looks like some of our fronts are still truncated. So we could solve that in a number of ways. But in block two, we added this fix in a different kind of do loop. This is an iterative do loop, which also requires us to update our array to include the number of variables in it. The do loop iterates from one through five, assigning the number to i in each iteration. So when i equals one, make replaces strings in the code. When i equals two, model replaces strings in the code, and so on. You'll also see I added a new if statement at the end. If i equals 5, in other words, if the variable is drivetrain and the value of drivetrain is fron, the truncated value of front, then set drivetrain equal to front. So let's run this code. Now we can see that front is no longer truncated. In our fictional cars data set, we have six miles per gallon variables. These are six sample miles per gallon. Let's convert these to kilometers per liter. For this example, we'll just store our new values in our miles per gallon variables, even though the labels no longer make sense. And in the next example, we'll fix that. So in example two, I created an array named MPG that includes the six MPG sample variables. Like in example one, we're using a do over loop to iterate through the variables in our array. And inside our do loop, we have our calculation. This calculation converts miles per gallon to kilometers per liter. In this example, the new value overwrites the old value. So let's run this code. So you can see 
that in the first row, the miles per gallon is 7.22 kilometers per liter, where it used to be 17 miles per gallon. In example three, rather than save over our miles per gallon variables, we keep them and we save our kilometers per liter to our KPL variables. To do that, we added another array named KPL that holds our new variable names. Before the do statement is run, these new variables don't hold any values. But as we iterate over our miles per gallon variables, we store the converted value in our KPL variables. So let's run this code. So we can see that now we have our miles per gallon fields and our kilometers per liter fields in the same data set. But I also wanted to show you how to do the same thing for character fields because it's a little different. If you recall in example one, we standardized our text values by setting them to uppercase and removing leading and trailing spaces. In this block, we do the same thing, but instead of overriding our original values, we save our standardized values in a different field. To do that, I created a new array named standard that includes our new variables where the standardized values will be stored. The length for our character variables will be set by the first value stored in them, unless we set the length beforehand. Ideally, you would set the length for each of the variables in a length statement before this array. But to show you how it's done inside the array, let's do it here and set the length to 25 for all variables. That should be enough for the longest values. Again, we're iterating through the variables in our strings array, but this time, we're storing the value in the variables in our standard array. Notice that in the second line, the upcase is applied to the variable in the standard array rather than the strings array. Otherwise, the second line would include the upcase value, but not the stripped value. I'll show you how to shortcut this in another example. So let's go ahead and run this code. So you can see that now we can see the standardized and the non-standardized values in the same data set. Here's a standardized make variable, and here's the non-standardized make variable. Arrays can also be used as a reference list. In example four, we convert a state name to its abbreviation. The state's data set only has one free text column and four rows. The text includes names of US states that we want to replace with the equivalent state abbreviation. To do this, we have two arrays with reference values. Array full contains the full state name. Array abbrev contains the abbreviated state value. In order to use these values in our code, we need to assign them to temporary variables. Alaska will be stored in TMP1, Alabama in TMP2, and so on. Notice we can shortcut the temporary variable naming by using the notation TMP1 through TMP50. Then we use a do over loop to iterate through the full array. Inside the do loop, we use the tranword function, which does search and replace. So the first argument is our text string. Again, this comes from our state's data set. It's these values right here. The second argument is our value from the full array. You'll notice that we use a strip function on these values because they're set to a length of 50. So each of these values would have trailing spaces included. And with those trailing spaces, they wouldn't equal the values in our array. The third argument is the replacement value from our abbrev array. We don't need to add the strip before these values because the length is set to two and each one is a two character value. So in the first iteration, the function looks for the value Alaska and if it finds it, it replaces it with AK. In this code, it's important to make sure your arrays line up perfectly. For every long value, there has to be an abbreviated value. You'll also see there's a text underscore mod equals text line this allows us to see the before in the text variable and the after in the text mod variable. So let's run this code. So we see that our original long state values are replaced by abbreviations 
even when there's more than one state in a string. In example five, we're generating a list of variables we want to include in an array. Like we did in previous examples, we're going to use the upcase function in the data step to change all values in our cars data set to uppercase. This process automates the generation of the list of character variables for our array. So first we use proc contents to output a list of columns and column types to a data set we named cars vars. Usually proc contents outputs to the results tab, but if you add an out equals and name the new data set, you can output it to a data set you can use. So let's run this. You can see that we now have a list of variables in the cars data set along with their type. Variables with type one are numeric and type two are character. In this SQL statement, we're storing a list of variables from our cars data set in the macro variable makes, where the type is character. Because more than one variable is character, we're creating a list of variables separated by a space. We return the value of the macro variable by adding an ampersand in front of it. This put statement outputs the value of our array to the log. So let's run this. So the log shows five column names were stored in our macro variable. Drive, train, make, model, origin, and type. These were assigned in their row order from our cars vars data set, which was sorted in alphabetical order. Again, our array is named strings, and it includes the columns included in our macro variable makes. We use the do over statement to apply our upcase function to all the columns in our array. So let's run this code. So you can see that all of our values are now set to uppercase, although we didn't do anything about the leading and trailing spaces in this example. This example is pretty simple, and there are a lot of ways to do what we just did more simply, as you'll see in the next example. However, there are a lot of uses for generating a list of items using SQL. I frequently use it to generate a list of data files to import and process after using some macro code that inventories files in a specific folder location. The WHERE clause is key to make sure to import a specific file type or look at a specific file naming convention. Lastly, in example six, I want to th show you three shortcuts. In example one, we use this code to iterate over our text variables to set to uppercase and remove leading and trailing spaces. When the variable was drivetrain, we also looked for the truncated value front and set it equal to front. The first shortcut I want to show you is that if we want to iterate through all of our text values, then we don't have to list all of them in our array. We just have to use the character keyword with the underscore before and after it. This character keyword includes all the text variables in our data set. For the second shortcut, remember that we use the iterative value i equals 5 to identify drivetrain so we could fix the truncated value. Instead, we use the vname function on our strings array variable to look for the variable name drivetrain. Now we can use a do over loop instead of an iterative loop. And we don't need to know how many character variables we have in our data set to run this code. Lastly, instead of using two character functions, strip and upcase on two different lines, we can combine them on the same line. These three shortcuts simplify and reduce our coding. Let's comment out this first block and run this code. We can see our text values are in uppercase and the leading and trailing spaces have been removed and our truncated front values have been fixed. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you saw how using arrays can simplify your coding and make it more efficient. There's really a lot you can do with them. Look for future videos on data standardization where I'll go more in depth on making your code more usable. Also look for videos on regular expressions which can be a really useful tool to use with arrays. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.